Hi everyone, welcome to FightNet Radio. My name is Lee Hanish. Bonus episode. So what I did is I took the final 30 minutes off of this week's show and I put it on by itself because I don't really know how people listen to this show. Um, I actually appreciate all of you listeners. Uh, I love working with Andrew each and every week. But I thought since the final 30 minutes of the show last week, which were about Oscar's blog, were so phenomenally... Uh, entertaining to me and Andrew both. I thought that I would take those off, make a separate show out of them, give you guys a separate bonus show during the week. So if you've heard it once, hey, enjoy it again. It's me and Andrew talking about the stupid blog that Oscar wrote. Um, If you don't listen to the show regularly and this title inspired you to listen, fantastic. Become a listener. Go to fightnetradio.com. Sign up. Get it on iHeartRadio, iTunes. Doesn't really matter. We have multiple venues. Fightnetradio.com will take you to our our iHeartRadio page. So enjoy. This is Andrew LaPache and me, Lee Honish, talking about Oscar De La Hoya's amazing blogging abilities. Welcome to humanity. This is our one. Whatever it takes, we got to set whatever it takes. This is Brock Lesnar, and you're listening to Fight Net Radio. Hi, this is Manny Pacquiao. I'll fight anybody on FightNetRadio.com. But it's a fact. You know what I mean? I, how dare them even challenge me in these fighters? You know what I mean? You know what I mean? With their primitive boxing skills. You know what I mean? They're as good as dead. Real. I am about to read what either Oscar wrote or somebody on... Maybe Bernard helped them. Maybe they got drunk and high together, and they came... They just That's there, not Bernard. Right? So they're just sitting there and they're just getting fucking hammered, right? They're sitting, they're they're after they saw this thing happen and they're sitting there and they're they're in Vegas. They're getting fucked up. And Oscar goes, Hey, I think I should write a blog. And Bernard looks at him and he goes, I think that's a bad idea. And Oscar goes, No, it's a good idea. And he spends the next three days of drinking and drugging and hookering. Notice how I threw in the hookering on that. I'm adding hookering. Because with Oscar, it just goes together with tequila and cocaine, allegedly. To write his opus to my fellow hashtag boxing fans, I write in the hopes that together we can protect the sport of boxing. Dot, 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 from me is what it should say. But all right, I I write in the hopes that together we can protect... The sport of boxing. I feel like I want I want almost you to read it just so I can add Oscar jokes at the end of each paragraph. With each passing day, it looks more and more likely that the circus known as Floyd Mayweather versus Conor McGregor will be coming to a town in the near future. As undercard fights start to take form, athletic commissions give their blessings in exchange for millions of dollars, and fighters start con- counting even more cash. One group will eventually be left to make sure this farce doesn't occur. We, the fans, who are the lifeblood of our sport, boxing is starting to dig out of the hole that is Floyd and Manny Pacquiao. Wow. Shoveled by waiting seven years to put on a fight that ended up being as dull as it was anticlimactic. Pause there. Pause. All right. He's, he, you, I'll just say, then I'll, I'll wait. No, I want to hear your take on the first half, but I'm going to say he wasn't lying there. That, okay. that- I would agree that the fight took seven years longer than it did, but no, we all wanted the circus. I, no doubt. Here's, no. here's what I would say about boxing fans. I don't think the fans that go to a fight care as much about the fight as they do care about how much of a fucking circus it's going to be. And we were there. And trust me when I say this, it was a fantastic fuck cluster of a circus. It, it was, um, but that that's not what drives the sport. No, the, it the, doesn't. The but life it t- does drive, look. It drives Vegas for it drives Vegas. Money. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Vegas You're... wants Vegas wants that crowd in the MGM. They want people fighting for seats like we were yeah. in the sports book. We were fighting for closed circuit venue seating. Yeah. That, that was that's sold crazy out. to me. But yeah, that's that was what, sold and out. And trust me, that's what they want. Right? They want I totally to- hear that, but what Oscar Oscar's talking about a bigger picture. The bigger uh, picture is yes, and I think Oscar's part of the problem. Um, mm-hmm. And I my my whole dot 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 to this first half of this letter would be this: Then why didn't you make 
Triple G versus Canelo right out of the gate, you fuck. Well, I, I will say he gave us Saul versus Floyd way earlier than than we should have. Right? He dropped the title in the trash, dude. It doesn't he matter. The title in the he, trash. he put his fighter on the line at what, 21, 22 years of age, and going gonna, up against gonna, the best? You're going to forgive him dropping the belt in the trash. No, no, no. That that happened because financially, Oscar was not prepared to give Triple G what he wanted. He wanted Triple G. He was financially to prove. prepared. He just didn't want to do it. He wanted him to prove that he was a pay per view sale, and he tried twice. Triple G went on pay per view twice and couldn't even do over three hundred and twenty thousand buys. Canelo did over a million with one fight. And that's when Oscar took full negotiation power away from K2 and Triple G. And they basically had to sign what, what Canelo and De La Hoya wanted them. Very smart move by Oscar. You got to remember, before Triple G's bomb of, of the pay-per-view sales, I'm sitting here saying this is a 50-50 fight. Bad, bad negotiating on Andrew's part. De La Hoya knew it wasn't a 50-50 part, told the kid to prove himself, when they tried, he bombed. Now Canelo's the, the man in the driver's seat. It's a very okay, smart move. but group. he really fucks himself over with the next paragraph. I, go ahead. 2017 has started off as a banner year for boxing. Joshua versus Klitschko. I agree. Thurman versus Garcia. We both agree. Yeah. Golovkin versus Jacobs. We both agree. Yeah. Canelo versus Chavez. Fuck you, Oscar De La Hoya. <laughs> He tried to throw that one in there. At the end. <laughs> at the end. He just dropped it in. Canelo versus Chavez. Like, Look you should it. put it in small print, and it should be not the same color as the rest right, of the blog. Right, okay, because right. here's what I got to say, Oscar. You just fucking dissed us for enjoying Floyd versus Manny Pacquiao. And if you're not telling me that Canelo versus Chavez isn't Floyd versus Pacquiao, Pacquiao versus Mayweather in some weird way, a fucking lopsided circus... That And that's what it was. And don't get me wrong. He's calling it a success because he controlled the whole weekend and made a shit ton financially, of money. Financially, yeah, financially. Oh, my God. Success. He fucking shit money starting on Friday night. By the way, for, I'll say it again. There weren't a full arena of people watching that weigh-in. There were not. There was one quarter of the arena, and there were still seats available. Got it? I'll say it again to everybody who thinks that Canelo Chavez did better. It did not. They couldn't even fill the entire arena. Andrew and I know for a fact Pacquiao versus Mayweather, you could not get a seat to the weigh-in. Period. Period. Okay? You were lucky to be standing around in the sports book to watch the weigh-in. They probably had, what, about three quarters... Or maybe half the stadium open for that Pacquiao uh, Mayweather. Oh, it was more one, than that. They had it at the far end. So yeah, yeah, yeah it was. Big. I remember it was a lot bigger than what they usually do. They they usually stay around seven, eight thousand. What you do is you quarter off the very far end of the arena, yeah, right? You just right. bring the stage all the way right. down, and you do what they call theater style seating, which is all the arcs around the stage, and they move the stage right up to the back edge of the arena, right? And then they canvas everything else off. Uh, Oscar, you're full of shit. Okay, you didn't, you couldn't, <laughs> he couldn't even fill, he gave away free tickets to watch boxing after the weigh-in, okay? Offered it to people. If you were in the arena, you could stay there and watch boxing. You could, for free. Okay, just hang around. You get to watch boxing. And, and you know, you know, you know one what? thing. Nobody did. You know one thing HBO never released, or at least I haven't seen it, and I'm, I'm pretty good at following the news. Uh, has they released any numbers on who watched the replay of that fight? No, they haven't. Because <laughs> you know, it was a joke. Yeah, you know, uh, they're 200,000. According to Oscar, all four of these fights and many others have brought the fight game back and reinvigorated interest from the ever-elusive casual fan. Uh, let me, let me, uh, go ahead, Lee. I Keep can't on. even get out of this. Par like, this paragraph is, fuck, he's such a fucking liar. But if you thought Mayweather Pacquiao was a black guy for our sport, I did not. No, I did not. A yeah. matchup between two of the best pound-for-pound -pound fighters that simply didn't deliver. Just wait until the best boxer of a generation dismantles someone who has never boxed competitively at any level, amateur or professionally. 
our Lee. sport might not ever recover. The only way that Pacquiao Mayweather, you want to know what it didn't deliver? The Pacquiao fans. Um, yeah, the Pacquiao fans are the only ones who got fucked. Yeah, yeah right. exactly. That's it. Everyone that knew Mayweather that was going to win that, that fight. That and the fake injury that had to happen. Everyone that has been calling Floyd Mayweather the favorite, it was a mismatch. Remember, se seven years before it happens, Las Vegas had Floyd a three and a half to one favorite. This is Manny at his prime. He was still a three and a half to one. And this all is of this guy who dropped weight to get paid. All okay. of his. He's yeah, such a that, dick. That situation he is such too. a hypocritical dick for writing this. I don't even know where to begin because Austin they, did this. He did it. He gained weight to fight Bernard. He dropped weight for Pacquiao. Yeah. What? Yeah. what Oscar, in, in what Lee, are you fucking talking about? In, in the Pacquiao fight, we know that there are rumors that they knew he was on the IV the night before. He now, couldn't eat. Now, yeah. I will make the argument that if he had gone, if, if Oscar had made the argument of at least Pacquiao Mayweather, they were both boxers, so we expected a better outcome, I could live with that. I could live with that for Canelo Chavez. Hey, they're both fighters, and we thought that, you know, it would be a competitive fight. We thought that as fight fans. We gave everybody a fair chance. And his next part of this blog is all about why the, this is a complete farce. I fully understand the initial attraction from any fan of combat sports. McGregor is almost certainly the best pound-for-pound -pound MMA fighter. Floyd is Floyd, the most dominant boxer of his time. Um, I might even say of all time, okay? Give him a little more credit. He deserves it. But success is one sport does not guarantee it in another. Far from it. And let's be clear, these are two different sports. From the size of the gloves that the fighters wear to the size and shape of the ring to the fact that one of the sports allows combatants to use their legs to strike. No, really, Oscar? Thank you for explaining MMA as though we were all stupid. Oscar goes on and further digs a ditch. Think about it. Beyond Bo Jackson and Deion Sanders, what other athlete has successfully competed in two sports in the modern age? And Jackson and Sanders both played baseball and football, though their high school and college careers before going professional. Furthermore, it's not like McGregor would be fighting a good fighter, let alone a meteoric one. He's fighting the best. To use a bit of an extreme analogy, I happen to be a pretty good golfer. Could I potentially hold my own one-on-one -on -one with a second-tier tour member? Maybe. But would I be able to compete with Rory McIlroy, Jordan Spieth, or Sergio Garcia? Of course not, nor would I think to try. Well, that's because you're a bitch, Oscar, and there's no money in it. If you did, you would. If there was money in if it, yeah. If there was five million buys. Oscar would be out there with his club <laughs> swinging his dick. No doubt. No, no doubt. doubt. Fuck you, Oscar. Uh, See, now, calm, calm. You, you still want to get in. Wait, he's still got another fucking five paragraphs of this crazy <laughs> shit. Fuck him. If he doesn't think that it... Now... I know critics will say that I'm only writing this because my company is promoting what will be uh, the culmination of an outstanding boxing uh, year when Canelo takes on Triple G in September. And I don't want anything to distract attention away from that fight. Correct. Thank you for writing and, and actually putting the truth in this article. But my interest is in the health of boxing as a whole. Liar. It's always been. And if Floyd were to come out of retirement to take on someone like Keith one-time Thurman, Errol Spence, or someone, some other top welterweight, not only would I applaud that fight, I'd be the first one in line to buy a ticket. No, you wouldn't. You wouldn't buy a ticket. You haven't bought a ticket in 20 years. Uh, maybe never. Maybe never. <laughs> maybe that kind never. of fight is what the fans and I, and that's what the fans and I am a fan first deserve. Which brings me back to the circus. Floyd and Connor's motivation is clear. It's money. You no know, shit. Really? Everyone's motivation. It's everybody's motivation. Look, I'd fight fucking Floyd Mayweather for $75 million. That's right. Okay? You would... It, this is like the old, oh, uh, would you fight Mike Tyson for, for $50 million? Yeah, I would. He can only knock me out once. Yep. I, that's, <laughs> that's right. Oh, but you could get brain damage. Yeah. But he can only knock me out once. I can die driving to work. I can die at work. Shit. Like, 
Uh, hey, give me a million, and I'll play the. I'll play the. That doesn't even pretend it's not. But it's also a lack of constant. 